All right, Victorum Gaming fans and Hail Caesar fans, we're back with another of our faction reviews. Today we are taking a look at the Gauls, so uh, one of the arch enemies of Rome here early on. So this one covers about 4th through 1st centuries BC, so again, th things like... Um, uh, Bituitus, King of the Arveni, Gallic Wars, um, Versingetorix, Battle of Belizea, and so on. So all very good things to research if you're thinking about these guys. So Gauls, of course, are going to be a more Horde-style army, but uh, again, offer some really fun things for the uh, on the gaming side of it, certainly uh, with um, their battle style. But also on the modeling and collecting side, you can go wild with all the... Um, um, uh, not, not quite camouflage, but uh, just all the different tribal decorations and all that stuff. Um, so uh, another mainly infantry powered list, um, although a little bit more flexibility than the Romans uh, in that regard. So again, could also still be all infantry, but infantry does have to be at least 75% of the list. And that does not include skirmishers, uh, of the infantry, at least half of it, uh, again, has to be, uh, war bands of one, uh, one kind or another. Cavalry here could be up to a quarter, whereas our previous, uh, army that we looked at, the Camillan Rome list, uh, it's only up to 20%. And then here, uh, you do have an option to bring in some chariots still, um, but only if you don't bring in medium cavalry, and that could only be 10% there. And then we have, um... Divisions of four up, but uh, skirmishers up to half as well there for the infantry. So taking a look at the list, and it's not a very long list at all, so um, not, again, too much diversity here, but again, that's you don't really need it so much with the Gauls. Uh, it's just lots of crazy uh, fighters, basically. So we start off then with the medium infantry warband, and again, um, lots of pretty uh, nasty stats here too, so really like high values. So medium infantry warband with swords and javelins has a clash of nine, so it's a good old bucket of dice. Uh, drops down pretty heftily to six uh, after, you know, that first turn, uh, whereas like the more typical Roman list that we'll see a little bit later on, um, you know, I think they're sporting sevens, uh, so like they just maintain that uh, nice uh, solid number regardless of how long the fight drops on so but a lot of a lot of the damage that the Gauls will cause is in that first turn and especially if they get the charge off so um if you can uh maneuver and uh, you know make your orders work for you properly as a Gaul general and get multiple charges off it can be very scary um indeed for whoever you are facing so uh they drop in with a morale of five as well and they are wild fighters so for 28 points a unit and then we have several different ways of upgrading these guys. So we can make them large for another 7 points per unit. Um, again, that will probably um, be a, a, a more physical limit to that uh, than anything else just for, like, table space. But uh, could be cool for some particularly wild games to have a lot of these. But um, 7 more points buys you um, a Clash of 11, which is just frightening. Um, uh, sustained of eight still and uh, even bumps the short range up a little bit and still just wild fighters but again 11 dice uh, plus the wild fighters on top is is pretty damn scary uh, especially if that's charging you of course um, we could then extra pay extra to field standardized sized or standard sized warbands as belge um, so they are uh, eager as well and that's just a free upgrade from the regular one up above. Um, same stats, uh, but just uh, eager. Um, we could uh, bring in basically standard size warbands of German allies, so up to four units in total. So that is a uh, points increase there of three per, um, but um, they swap out eager for brave here. Um, same stats, though. So it could be interesting to, again, feel that just for some diversity and uh, not another type of special rule to surprise the opponent with. And then finally, uh, the Gase, uh, I always struggle with this pronunciation, Gaseite or Gaseite or something like that. Um, but uh, only one unit here, but these guys are Wild Fighters, Fanatics, and Frenzied Charge. So really fun stories uh, about them um, and some of their early encounters with the Romans. So uh, pretty crazy guys there. So another four points per unit there from the standard. So again, taking advantage of some of that would be... Uh, certainly advisable for uh, just the access to the extra special rules and really just springing the that last unit there, the Gisete on somebody with, you know, again, Wild Fighters Fanatic and Frenzy Charge is, is pretty damn scary. You also have the option here for a General's Guard medium uh, infantry warband, uh, one unit there. Stats, again, basically the same as all the regular size ones up above, but these guys are now, uh, they lose Wild Fighters, but they gain Tough Fighters, Stubborn, and Valiant, which 
Uh, also makes them pretty solid uh, just uh, defensively, too, which you don't always expect with the Gauls. Uh, but 31 points for that unit there. That's uh, more or less a bargain. Um, moving on, uh, we go right into the skirmishers. So basically that's it for the infantry there. So just war bands uh, for days, basically. Uh, skirmishers with javelins as small units, so again, typical stats that we've seen over and over again here, but we can uh, basically have half of them equipped with slings or bows, which does actually give us a little bit of long range, uh, which is otherwise uh, sorely lacking from this list, so taking a little bit of advantage of that uh, would probably be advisable just to um, uh, try and put a little bit of damage on the enemy uh, before uh, the battle is joined here in close combat. Uh, on the cavalry side, fairly solid because they're a regular size unit compared to some of the Roman things that we saw in the previous uh, Camillan list again. But uh, medium cavalry with spears or javelins, so a very solid uh, clash of eight, drops to a five, but tough fighters as well on the cavalry. Really good stuff there, 28 points a unit, so would be useful to take advantage of some of that. Um, if, again, you don't want to bother with the chariots, we'll see that next here, or almost next. Light cavalry with uh, javelins as small units too, just some more... Uh, Small harassing units with, uh, again, that cavalry speed. Uh, 17 points a pop there. And then finally the Gallic Light Chariots. So again, gives you the best save that you're going to get in the list, but um, only a clash of six, although short range is just brutal there, um, a stat of four. Um, so, you know, if you're going to go that route, again, depending on the size of the game, and, you know, you're going to forsake the cavalry option if you do that, but um, some quantity of Gallic Chariots could actually be kind of nasty there. Um, if for nothing else, then just the that nasty short range um, ability there. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it doesn't really mention like what the chariots are equipped with, which uh, seems like a little bit of an oversight. Um, so I imagine similarly to most of the other infantry here. Um, so probably some combination of javelins and uh, like swords or spears, but 27 points a unit there. And then typical commander um, access here. So uh, leadership eight. Um, which uh, shouldn't be surprising, uh, even though you might maybe have expected like seven or something, but um, they, the Gauls didn't have bad generals, um, so uh, for the most part. Um, but uh, of course, uh, pretty solid across the board, so really um, it's all going to hinge upon the warbands, though, and how you can maximize their potential. So again, you're pretty much going to be throwing more dice than everybody else. You're not going to be quite as durable, but again, getting charges off is going to be the key, so trying to set yourself up to have that as much as possible in, in, in good positions and um, you know if it's not something like a really heavy infantry unit uh, again I just think Roman legionaries basically um, you know if you're running into other mediums or especially light of course uh, you are just with with the weight of dice and everything else um, unless they just roll incredibly well on their morale saves you are just going to um, just pound the crap out of them, basically. Uh, that's just a lot of dice. Their stamina values are going to fill up, and you know you're going to have a good chance of breaking people um, as well. So, and, um, you know, especially if you can do it in you know on the chart itself, uh, you can certainly try and punch holes in people's lines. So, uh, trying to go into some of your bag of tricks here, aside from just the standard unit. So maybe taking advantage of again like that one unit of Gisete and um, and or a couple of those large units just for that even extra amount of dice uh it could be very very scary um and with this list i feel like you know you can't really play hang back and play aggressive or that's not aggressive but defensively uh because you really don't have much in the way of long range so i think this one is just um uh you know all out uh, going at the enemy but still with a little bit of uh thought to it as well so um probably isn't going to be the best idea to just do a sort of human wave and just hope that something sticks and you break through somewhere. Although you certainly could do that. Again, trapping the enemy maybe on their side of the table or preventing them from maneuvering around too much and certainly trying to, like, outflank you or something like that um, could be nasty. But, um, you know, try to take the initiative, I think, overall and just get on top of the enemy and know that they are going to basically be staring down unit after, or, you know, unit of warband after unit of warband and so on and so forth. And then uh, they're going to be facing a tough fight regardless just because of the, the bucket of dice that you can throw across the board here. Um, and, you know, still taking advantage of some of your skirmishing units and stuff like that just to screen uh, a little bit just in case 
uh, or depending on what the enemy has, or try to redirect a little bit. Um, and then, you know, the, your other choices, did you go all infantry, uh, which, you know, if cool, uh, again, it's just going to be all war bands then. Um, but if you did decide to bring in some of the mobility, you know, uh, I feel like the chariots really do complement uh, the war bands, uh, especially just with that extra harassing ability up close with that uh, short-range stat. Um, but uh, the cavalry certainly would let you have a little bit more mobility on the flanks and maybe try and intercept some uh, opposing cavalry. Again, having tough fighters on your cavalry unit is pretty cool. Um, don't really see that too much. So again, there's a lot of interesting things to think about with the Gauls here. And again, really fantastic army to collect um, on the painting and hobby side and being able to bring in some German allies too. So, um, you know, fairly similar uh, model ranges and stuff like that. So having some uh, mixed forces there could be cool too to represent some of these different tribes. Uh, would have been cool to uh, some of the lists uh, do offer like the ability to you know field um, special generals and stuff like that. So it would have been cool if there was like a option to have a better general like Vercingetorix who could maybe like give you leadership nine or something. But um, I think he might be in um, uh, one of the campaign books or something like that. So, but uh, again, it would be cool just as the as part of the general list. But nonetheless, Gauls really good stuff here. So um, definitely have a lot of things that you can research to on the painting model painting and modeling side and just um having having fun with the list here basically um just lots of crazy fighters who are gonna um smash into the enemy and either you're gonna pound right through them or you're gonna eventually be ground down because you um definitely lose a little bit of steam after that first round but it should be fun nonetheless so hope you guys enjoyed our little look at the gauls here so uh, again uh, four through first centuries bc if you could drop us a like and a subscribe if you haven't already and then stay tuned for more hail caesar reviews